Fall has been on my mind and in my heart, and I'm sure it's because my birthday is on Halloween. I love this season so much. Thank you so much for coming and visiting here in my craft room today. We are going to be making some Dollar Tree crafts. All right, now let's get crafting. Grab one of these tag signs. Dollar Tree has so many of these tag signs. So just grab whatever season they have them in store. And we're gonna grab one of these wood wreaths. It's kind of almost in the shape of an oval. They have these in their floral section. And two of these tumbling blocks. Start by taking off that tag and cutting some fabric to fit the size of the tag wood sign. I do not like having an unfinished backside. So I'm just cutting this fabric with a real quick snip around. And I'm just gonna glue that on so it cleans up the backside and it looks so much more finished like this. Then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to give it a nice coat of a beautiful pumpkin orange. I did two coats because orange is an opaque color. It usually takes about two coats for that to be nice and vibrant the way I wanted it to look once it was all dry. This part might scare a lot of people, but it's going to be so beautiful in the end. So if the dry brushing is not your thing, you don't have to do it. But I'm just going to take some of this off-white paint Make sure I only have a little bit and I'm going to dry brush around the sides. Now I know this looks a little scary, but look at the results when it's done. It's added so much texture and it reminds me of the Cinderella pumpkins that you can get at the fall time. Now I'm going to take some hot glue. I'm going to take that wreath that we have from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to glue it down with a whole bunch of glue. And I'm also going to add in those little two tumbling blocks. This is going to represent the stem at the top of a pumpkin. At this point, you can decorate it however you would like. I'm gonna come in with some of these creamy, peachy, almost tan-like leaves that they have at the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna play around with those leaves in just a little bit further in this video, but now I'm going to glue down my grateful wood cutout, glue that on, and then add on a few more of these leaves and a couple of these berries that were from all the same pick. Now, at this point, we can leave it like this, but I don't like that the top has that little drilled out hole. So I'm gonna make a twine thick bow. And I've had a lot of you ask me to slow down to show how I make this. I start with a long end to my twine and then with my four fingers spread it out, I wrap it around my hand probably about 10, maybe 12, 13 times until it's nice and thick. I have another long end at the other end. I take one of those ends, wrap it around the middle a whole bunch of times, and then I tie a couple of knots. This is going to give you this really beautiful loopy twine bow. I leave those tails long at the bottom because I just like how it looks. You could add some more of that twine down at the bottom for longer tails but I usually like just the two twine pieces coming down. And then I just fluff up the bow really big. And at this point, it's just so pretty and so perfect for fall. Not too understated, but not too overdressed. And now I'm going to just add some hot glue and pop that right into place to conceal that hole at the top. And you've got yourself a beautiful farmhouse fall sign. We are going to be taking one of these crates, some of these stacking blocks, a wood circle, and then a skewer stick. And we are going to be building a little apple crate. I thought this one was so fun and I had a good time bringing together all of these random pieces to make something special. So I glued together two of those stacking blocks and then stapled them. And now I'm going to put those aside for a second and add on two of these stacking blocks. They actually fit perfectly inside of these crates. I'm using some wood glue and some hot glue to glue them into place to make sure that they're nice and sturdy in there. And then I put it over on the edge of my table and just shot in two staples to make sure that they would hold in place. Then those two that I had earlier where I stapled them together and glued them, I'm going to drill two holes in the ends and I'm gonna bring them together and this is going to be our little wheelbarrow, the little wheel at the end. So I'm gonna put one in, add some more hot glue, slide on that wood circle, 
and then I'm going to add on some more glue and add on that last other side. Now this is going to be able to make it look just like a wheelbarrow on the front and I just think that this part is just so fun and really easy to do. Once I've got that all in place, I'm going to go ahead and also slide those into, again, the crates because they fit perfectly in there, nice and snug. And then I went ahead and made sure that not only was it snug in there, but I added in some hot glue, making sure that it locked everything in place. Then I'm going to take two more of these stacking blocks and I'm going to just add them and this is going to create the handles of our little wheelbarrow and I'm going to use my staple gun on the inside. It fits in there perfectly to be able to staple those in to make sure they don't come out or pop off. Now at this point everything has been assembled and I can go ahead and paint my crate white. I went on the inside and the outside with just one coat and then on the handles basically anywhere these stacking blocks where I painted those all red and I didn't want to bump into the white so I'm just taking my time with an angled brush and I also did not want to get any paint on my wood wheel because I just thought it was so cute to leave that raw wood. This part was really fun. I just took my time going around it and making sure that I got all of those painted red. I really love the way that they just kind of pop and stand out with the white crate. Once everything was dry, I went ahead and took some of my black and white gingham fabric and I'm just going to cut a couple strips and put those inside of my crate and glue it down on the edges so it kind of is flapping over the side. I thought this was so perfect and just really darling to be able to now fill inside with whatever you want. And so since I'm doing this for fall, I'm going to add in some cute apples. And I will link my apples down below. I purchased these off of Amazon. And then I'm going to take some of these garden chalkwood signs and I'm just going to pop off the stick and glue that right onto the crate. So that way I can put whatever I want on these little signs using my chalk pin. I'm going to put one on both sides because I thought that would be really adorable. So wherever it's sitting, you can see one of the signs. And I'm going to make these apples one dollar for each apple and at this point it's ready to be used for the fall season. I love this round sign from the Dollar Tree, Bless This Home. I thought it was so beautiful with these very trendy colored pumpkins on it. But we're going to jazz it up and make it look a little more high end than just a $1.25 sign. Go ahead and grab one of these bead wreaths from their floral craft section. We're gonna take off some of the beads and we're going to turn it into a handle for the top of the sign. By the time we're done, this is going to look so much more high end where it looks like it came from Kirkland's or even Home Goods. It has such a beautiful finish to it by just adding a bead handle and a gorgeous bow that is nice and big with a statement on it. So go ahead and cut that wire down, bring it up around to the front and twist all that wire into place. Just adding this handle and removing that twine handle that was on it before really elevates the look of this and makes it look so much more pricey and still our ending results for this project is only going to cost us maybe about three and a half dollars. I think probably even just three dollars. So go ahead and cut your bow down. Go ahead and get all of that into place. And then you can see here that I double up my bow. I just simply line a thinner bow on top of a bigger bow and then tie the bow like you traditionally would make a bow. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue that into place. And I've got some twine here. Maybe we'll say it was probably like 375 to make this sign. I just wrapped a bunch of twine around my hands, knotted a knot around the middle of it, cut it down, and to finish it, we're gonna add on a beautiful star button and you have a gorgeous high-end new decor piece. What would fall be without a gorgeous wreath for our doors in our home? So I picked up this wicker white wreath at the Dollar Tree. 
they restocked their white sunflowers and made sure to grab some of those and now I'm coming in with a whole bunch of color with wheat sticks and leaves I really wanted to just showcase those beautiful colors that we see in the fall time some of these beautiful peonies berries and then this very last pick is actually from Hobby Lobby I'll show it a little bit later in this segment for this project now go ahead and take your darkest leaf first glue those down and then start to come in with the leaves this is going to fill up that wreath form and then as we start to come in with the berries you're going to want to stick around the sides of the wreath, making sure you're filling it out even more. I'm now going to come in with these beautiful grass wheat sticks, and I'm going to just stick those right down in there. Do you see how I'm sticking all along the sides to add that texture and the volume to this wreath? I just keep playing with it staking them in, gluing them in place, and then when I get that all to the place I like, I now can come in with my florals. I'm gonna start placing all of my white sunflowers in the spots that I have a little bit more of balding areas. I'm gonna glue those in because those are a very large item. They're gonna do a lot of coverage for those spots, but I like to sporadically place those kind of evenly around the wreath. And then I'm now gonna come in with these beautiful just sunset pink orange peachy colors of this peony and i'm going to just stake those into the wreath in different areas now this is that pick i've grabbed from hobby lobby and i'm just going to cut a couple of these because i wanted to bring in a little bit more white to make sure that the white sunflowers don't look stark on it anytime you use an off color from something that's really bright and colorful you want to come back in with another version of that stark color, which is the white sunflower, and then add a little bit more texture in with a different type of floral, but the same color. And that's how you get a beautiful finished look. For this DIY, I'm going to be taking two of these baskets that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. They have these pretty much year round. I'm going to take also some of these clips. I'm going to just show this whole thing as I'm going through. I'm slowing down the steps so that you can see everything. I'm going to cut down the middle of the basket and then I'm going to come down to the bottom and cut around the bottom of the square of the basket freeing up the whole thing. So I'm gonna just show myself doing this and while I'm doing this, I thought I would give an update on my mom. So many of you have been asking how she's been doing. If you haven't heard, my mom ended up having cancer at the beginning of this year. She went in for a regular doctor's appointment and they found cancer. She had to have an emergency surgery and then they started her on chemo. The chemo dosage was too strong for her and sadly, it almost took my mom's life, but through a lot of help through doctors and my family trying to come together to help her get healthy, my mom has made a full recovery. So she's back home and she's doing great. At this point, you can see I cut out the bottom part of the basket. Now I'm gonna go and divide the two baskets. So my mom at this point is doing so much better and she just recently went to her newest oncologist she switched doctors and they did some blood work and her scans came back being 100 percent cancer free so at this point she's cancer free which is such a blessing but they want to have some more scans done in about six months so thank you all so much for the prayers and the love that you sent my mom's way it meant so much to me and my family we're so grateful we know that your prayers did help my mom and just helped her keep going. She got to read some of the comments and she just kept saying how sweet all of you are for being so kind and understanding and sending those prayers to heaven. All right, going back to the basket, I, you can see after I've cut the two pieces apart, I'm now going to add on some glue at the side of those cuttings where we split the basket in half and then I'm going to clamp the two sides together and then I'm going to use the clips to hold them all together so it doesn't come undone. Once that's dry, I'm going to come around to the bottom of the basket, add some glue, and clamp that down. 
Now I got this idea because I was at a home decor cute boutique store. I saw that they had these baskets there and I thought, wait a second, that looks like something that I bought from the Dollar Tree. So I wanted to try to take a chance and see if I could make it work in my own craft room for a fraction of the cost. The smallest basket they wanted $15 and the bigger basket they wanted like $23, I think. No way, I thought. I could totally make that by just manipulating the basket and taking my time and going slow. This is real speed time. You're seeing exactly how long it's taking me to cut it apart. Now for the longer basket, you can see that I brought on a second piece, the other half of that basket. I'm going to glue around that rim for the top of where the basket used to be before we cut it apart so we can weld those pieces together. And the trick is, is you wanna try to just squish it and tighten it almost like a belt around the sides so it looks like it's all one piece. I'm coming in with tons of glue, but not too much that it's gonna leak out everywhere and make a big mess and you're gonna see glue everywhere. I'm gonna just keep squishing it all together and then holding it all in place. Now you can see you can't really put a clip there, so I was just kind of hanging out holding this until it dried, but that was okay. I had music playing in my craft room, and once it was dry and it all looked nice and complete and good, I then went ahead and moved onto the bottom of the basket and did the same thing like I did for the other little basket, where I added glue to the bottom, and then I used my clips to clamp it all into place to make sure that everything is nice and glued and locked in. Now these baskets are just so pretty and I think that you could put so many cute things in it. I think they would be beautiful hanging up on hooks in a kitchen on the wall. You can hang it up on a very small skinny wall and a small powder room bathroom. There's so many pretty things you can do with these baskets. Now I'm going to show in a second how I did these handles on the longer basket but first I'm sharing that I wanted to just add a little tag to the front. The one that I saw inspiration at the store actually had a tag on it and I thought it would be pretty to add one of these garden tags from the Dollar Tree. Now the bottom square from the basket, when you pull it apart, it gives you the perfect size to create little handles for the basket. So I'm just going to take one of these wood strips and I'm going to just tuck it in and around, creating that little loop and I'm going to add some hot glue in there so that it can hold that handle in place. And then at this point, you can put in whatever you would like. Now, I'm not going to put any foam in because I want to be able to change out this basket all year long. I have a really pretty hook in my kitchen, and I thought this would be so pretty seasonally to switch out the florals in it. Whether you take a couple of these ideas that I shared today or do the full project, either way, I'm so grateful you stopped in to visit with me today and I hope this video does inspire you. I cannot wait for the fall season to get here. It is going to be such a great time of the year. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and click the subscribe button if you're new. I would love to have you join my craft community here. And until the next episode, bye friends.